Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm here with NDP health critic David Shepard, who has, of course, been a tireless advocate for real solutions designed to end the crisis in healthcare that we are experiencing here in Alberta. We are also here with you today on the traditional territories of Treaty 6, and I'd like to recognize the Métis people of Alberta who share a very deep connection with this land. The BC government announced a new agreement with doctors yesterday that will significantly increase their compensation. The president of Doctors BC, Dr. Ramnik Dosanjh, called the agreement a quote-unquote seismic shift and the best agreement in the country. The agreement also addresses many concerns that doctors have been voicing, including the time and the costs associated with administration and the need for primary care to be better integrated with the rest of the health system and social services. Of course, these are early days and the success of this plan in BC will be measured over years to come. But we're here today because I truly fear that Alberta doctors will look to BC as a place where the government has issued a very clear intent to build respect and to end chaos in healthcare. Here, unfortunately, what we've seen from the Daniel Smith government is not that. Instead, in fact, we haven't seen that from the UCP government at all over the last three and a half years. The previous UCP Premier tore up the doctor's contract, continuously disrespected them, and in response, doctors began to leave Alberta. And many of the problems in healthcare that are impacting all Albertans right now, 17-hour emergency room wait times at children's hospitals, waiting for an ambulance for hours, and dozens of partial hospital closures, are a result of doctors and healthcare workers leaving the province, or put another way, a result of a healthcare professional shortage. Unfortunately, these people, including doctors, don't see hope under the new Danielle Smith regime. Instead, what she's done is boast about drastic structural reform in healthcare while ignoring the urgent and immediate needs of Albertans. Smith has promised that the first 90 days of her health care plan will be quote-unquote bumpy. And I would argue that this government and many of the people sitting in her new cabinet have already run our health care system not onto a bumpy road, but right off the road. Smith leans on conspiracy theories about health and medicine, ignoring the advice of Alberta health care workers, which has damaged even further this government's relationship with health care workers. Smith blamed healthcare workers for manufacturing what she claimed uh, to be uh, non-existent staff shortages. Imagine that, making claims as ridiculous and unfounded as this after all of the horrific stories that we have actually seen unfold in front of us. And after the constant run of images of overwhelmed healthcare workers, and after repeated attempts by UCP cabinet ministers to discredit them and the critical work they do. Now, Danielle Smith is stoking the fires for another round, rather than focusing on real solutions. All of this in the face of yesterday's decision by BC to be offering doctors hope, while the UCP offers none. And as a result, I fear we are at great risk, as I said, of doctors heading west. So, we need action immediately. The Alberta NDP has big ideas for health care. And we've made a commitment to each and every person in this province that we will work day and night to end the chaos in our health care. Recently, I committed that an under an Alberta NTP government, we would launch the largest health care worker recruitment campaign this province has ever seen. And we would get started on that on day one because we know how critical health care is, public health care is. We know it's part of being Canadian. So my message to Albertans is this, you deserve access to health care when you need it, where you need it, and we will deliver that to you. And my message to Alberta doctors today is this, please hold on. I know things are bleak. I know the promise of more chaos is the last thing that you want to hear. But we are building a team that is committed to working collaboratively with you on ending this chaos, that is committed to respecting you and the critical work you do that is committed to supporting public health care in this province. We are listening. There is hope for a better future here in Alberta, and we know that doctors and all health care professionals will play a critical role in building that. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions that folks may have. 
We're going to now go to the floor for questions. Uh, please state your name and your outlet. If joining us by Zoom or over the phones, please use the raise hand function or star nine. Thank you. Hey, Rachel Dean from CP. Um, you didn't mention the new contract. Does that, uh, uh, does that help keep doctors here, do you think? And also, the Premier's mentioned that uh, not having to work in a vaccine workplace might be a draw for some health workers. Does that play into it? So first of all, the new contract merely undoes uh, part of the uh, chaos and disrespect that we have seen uh, over the last three and a half years from ripping up the old contract. And quite honestly, it doesn't really guarantee that it won't be ripped up again two months after the next election. Uh, so their record with respect to the contract is questionable at best. More to the point, though, uh, is that um, we have so many problems facing us in healthcare. And we have a premier whose solution is to blow up AHS, uh, rather than sitting down with doctors and other healthcare professionals to look at ways that they would suggest that we can make the situation better. Now, on the matter of uh, whether uh, the, vac the premier's uh, rather odd perspective on vaccinations will actually result in us recruiting more workers to Alberta. That is an utterly ridiculous, ridiculous assertion. People who are trained in healthcare, uh, whether they are nurses' aides, whether they are neurosurgeons, all understand evidence and science. And those folks being told that they have to work in a healthcare system that is being led by a premier who doesn't believe that vaccines are an important part of any healthcare regime, those folks are much more likely to go somewhere else. So I would argue that those kinds of statements are adding to uh, the consideration by many healthcare professionals of leaving the province. All this at a time when we see other provinces acting quickly to attract healthcare professionals to their jurisdictions, at a time when we know there's a shortage, and, and our Premier is questioning whether there's a shortage, and, and failing to get to the real uh, solutions that uh, we need to see in place. A uh, follow-up might be for you or, or maybe for David. Just talk, looking at the, the Hinshaw situation, the Premier has said that she's going to obviously move Hinshaw out of the job and, and replace her with a team of advisors accountable to her bypassing copying on the org chart, I guess. Can, have you looked into this? Can she do this? Don't you have to, don't you have, to have a chief medical officer in health? So we know that the legislation right now uh, pr essentially prohibits uh, the Premier from doing this. Um, we know, uh, in fact, that's why there was the legal case that, that uh, um, the government lost in part last week where they were told that their, some of their actions during the pandemic were unreasonable. And part of it is, is that the legislation actually uh, says that these are decisions that have to be taken by the public health officer. So she can do it if she changes legislation, of course. Uh, in fact, to, to blow up health, Alberta Health Services, she will also have to change legislation. But there's nothing to stop her from using uh, the majority she currently has to do that. Um, the question is whether it's something we should do. And I would argue that Danielle Smith is the last person who should be making these decisions. The people who should be making these decisions as the situations arise are the health experts, the, the epidemiologists, the uh, infectious disease folks, the people with experience in, in mental health issues. Those people should be making recommendations, and as I've said before, they should be made publicly, and then the chief medical officer of health and or cabinet, whoever has the ultimate uh, legislated authority for making these decisions must be then held accountable for where there is divergence from the expert advice they are receiving. We'll now go to the next person at the floor. Hi, it's Kim Smith with Global News. Do you agree that this is the best agreement in Canada, more specifically in um, better than Alberta? And would you consider bringing in a similar agreement to our province? 
Well, I think uh, in terms of the overall benefits, my understanding, and I, I certainly can could be uh, corrected, but my understanding is is that it brings uh, doctors in BC their overall compensation packages ahead of Alberta's, um, and and Alberta's historically led the pack in that front, and so it it probably does mean that uh, uh, Alberta BC physicians are being paid more. Whether the actual structure of the agreement is the best structure uh, is still um, up for debate. Um, and that's why it's so important to be sitting and talking to uh, these frontline healthcare professionals, both physicians and allied health professionals, around the best way to provide uh, family-based primary care in our communities and who uh, does what role and what the fin best financial relationship is that would ensure that that happens. So uh, I do think that, that uh, where BC is going is an improvement, uh, certainly in terms of the package, in terms of the structure. It's probably an improvement for them as well um, and it may even be an improvement on what we have in Alberta but it is is it the best overall I actually think that that we can do better but the key is that we need a government that is focused on partnering collaborating and uh, investing the resources that are necessary to make sure that Albertans get the health care that they need when they need it uh, because that's uh, such a critically important uh, part of uh, people's lives Hi, it's Lisa from The Journal. Um, I'm wondering if you can, I mean, it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison, the salary of a doctor yep. in BC versus That's Alberta. True. There's obviously a huge differential in the cost of living. So, I mean, how do you address that problem? Mm -hmm. for, for Alberta to be paying more than Mm -hmm. What doctors are paying in BC? How do you address well, that? Well, honestly, uh, historically, Albertans, uh, Alberta doctors, on average, and again, it's very complicated. David could tell you more about it, but on average, historically, Alberta doctors have earned more, but not necessarily in every specialty or every area where we need them. And historically, Alberta's cost of living has been lower. Um, uh, but uh, so, so that is the way it's it's been for some time. Just like uh, people who work in the private sector in Alberta uh, earn more than people in other parts of the country, uh, even while living in a place where the cost of living is lower. So, so that uh, theme has been common through many different uh, professions uh, and sectors uh, in our economy for a very long time. Um, when it comes to uh, comparing, it, there's so many different factors. Cost of living is one. The type of practice is another. Uh, you know, I spent this summer with, uh, you know, camping with some very good family friends who uh, raised their lovely daughter. Uh, you know, she was at our wedding and then she grew up here and just uh, by the river here in Riverdale. And she is a family doctor who is doing her residency in BC because she's interested in uh, a salaried kind of arrangement where she can see her patients and care for them and she's not doing fee-for-service. And so she's out in BC. What's well, a real loss? I mean, this is someone who's born and raised in, in Edmonton who you hope will, will be a family doctor here. So uh, certain types of young doctors have different hopes for their career than other types of doctors with different uh, models for their career. So it's a very complex thing, which is why you need to spend your time and your resources at the table figuring out what are what the, the, the citizens of Alberta both most need to have addressed right now and what the best tools are to get there. Um, so I know it's a long answer, but... Um, uh, different specialties, different types of medicine, there are different arrangements that will uh, bring about greater care for Albertans and we need a government that is focused on finding those r arrangements and putting them in place. Essentially we can't buy our way out of the story. Just to, is that what you're saying? Um, that's not the only part of the formula. It's part of the formula though. To be clear, the UCP government has not been honest with Albertans in terms of their funding of our health care system. They have cut our health care system since 2019. Uh, they have uh, talked about global funding by referring to unstable, unpredictable contingency funding, putting it into the same pot and saying that they're increasing funding. But if you're a health care administrator, you can actually only plan on the basis of the money you're given, not on the basis of a contingency that you can't count on. And so overall, the level of, of resourcing in relation to inflation and population in Alberta has gone down 
over the last three and a half years. And so that is part of the problem, particularly when you take into account that our healthcare system has faced more pressures in the last three and a half years than it probably has in generations. Yep. Okay. Jump back in. Um, so I'm wondering, so what are the specifics? Though? Like you're calling on the government to take urgent action. Absolutely. Are you suggesting that they steal your platform plank and <laughs> have the largest recruiting drive in Alberta's history, or what, can you give us a kind of specific call? Well, I mean, there's, there's a few things that we would do differently, but let me say, uh, first of all, that David, uh, along with uh, many people in the healthcare sector, um, are working together right now and putting together um, uh, some more detailed elements of our platform. But from a high level point of view, here's what I would uh, advise the Premier if she were to be listening to me, and I would call on her to do first, stop her threats to blow up the system and create more chaos. Stop it. Secondly, fund the system appropriately. Third, do whatever you can to try to fix the profoundly broken relationships with frontline healthcare providers, starting by accepting science as a critical way in which they practice medicine. Um, and then finally, ensure that you start funding it appropriately. These are some, uh, along of course, with the recruitment effort that is so necessary. These are places that they can start. Um, uh, and um, we'll have more to say on more detail going forward. I'm now gonna check in on the phones. Is there anyone you could call? call oh, sorry, didn't see you there. It's uh, Jeremy with CTV. Um, just wondering what sort of, you know, it, it, is it really as simple as BC is offering more money so doctors will move there? You know, a lot goes into a, a move, you know, it, moving a practice is a big deal. You're right. Wondering what sort of data or, or, or sort of insight you might have as to it supports this, this fear of, of doctors moving away. Yeah. So, you know, this is a multi-layered problem. It's been going on a long time. We know across the country there is a shortage of healthcare professionals. We know that already. We know that in Alberta, there's a, already a shortage uh, that has been created as a result of first COVID, but also the profound mismanagement of the UCP uh, in terms of ripping up the doctor's contracts, in terms of uh, threatening to blow up AHS, in terms of telling nurses that they had to uh, accept wage rollbacks, um, uh, promising to, to fire thousands of them uh, in, in uh, early 2020. I mean, they have engaged in a way that has destabilized the healthcare workforce in Alberta far more than uh, what you see in other parts of the country. So yes, there's going to be a bit, of, a bit of a bidding war across the country, but that's not the only issue. The, also the issue is that these folks need to feel supported uh, with, by their government. They need to feel that they are partners. And so my message to Alberta healthcare workers and to doctors, please don't pick up and go yet. Help is on the way. We will sit down when given the opportunity, if being so lucky to be given the opportunity, roll up our sleeves and, and start talking about the solutions that will address the many crises that are being faced within the system uh, across the board. And just, you know, you addressed this a little bit already, but obviously the cost of living in BC is, is much higher uh, on average, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, especially in the urban centers. You know, so, sh you know, sh I guess how attractive would that higher compensation be given you might be spending it all on you know, a mortgage or something like yeah. that? Well, I mean, I think people make the decisions to live in different places for a whole bunch of different reasons. Um, all we can do is make sure that we build a well-funded, stabil uh, public health care system that is uh, stable and predictable, that respects science that respects healthcare professionals, that respects frontline healthcare workers, um, that understands the incredibly important role they play uh, in our community as a whole, and uh, that will give them a good work life. So uh, these are not the messages that have been sent by this UCP government over the last three and a half years. And I'm here today to say, hold on, uh, because there, there may be uh, a, a government soon that will in fact uh, operate on those principles and uh, we will um, together build a healthcare system within which um, folks want to spend all of their career right here in Alberta taking care of Albertans. 
And now we'll go to the phones. Caller, your line is open. Alberta today. So I'm, I'm just a little confused. So the, the, our provincial government has been considering alternatives to the fee-for-service model, which is what the BC government just did, is this alternative. Do you think we should wait to see how things go in BC, since this is a kind of different way of doing things? Or should the UCP sort of accelerate their plans to look at alternatives? What's, what are you asking for on that front? I, I absolutely think that they should accelerate their work uh, uh, within a stable health system, uh, meeting uh, collaboratively with um, healthcare professionals to uh, come up with different models. Um, these conversations about different fee models uh, have been happening across the country. We see different models in Ontario that are actually uh, considerably uh, more um, innovative than even what we saw in BC. Um, and, and there are opportunities for us here in Alberta. So what they need to be doing is focusing on that work. They need to stop questioning science. They need to stop demonizing vaccines. They need to stop planning to blow up Alberta Health Services. Because if you do all those things, then you will not have the capacity to do the work that is necessary to make the kinds of innovative changes that ensure that our health care providers are able and supported to provide the health care that Alberta families need. And uh, I guess as a follow-up, the Nurse Practitioners Association has recently launched a campaign um, and they're trying to get um, get it so they can practice more. They say they're, they're available, but because they can't bill for overhead services or have their own practice, they're sort of at the, at the mercy of being attached to a PCN. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that to address the, the health care shortage? Would you sit down with the nurse practitioner? Absolutely. I think, you know, nurse practitioners uh, represent a tremendous opportunity to expand the scope of care, uh, particularly family t family medicine uh, in communities across the province that, that people would have more access to. Um, you know, I, I think there's, uh, and, and we are very, very interested in it. The, the exact kind of model, uh, I think, needs to be uh, discussed and canvassed with them, but with them as the lead in the kinds of clinics that we're talking about, I think that's absolutely appropriate. And so um, uh, we, we definitely need to be doing a better job of taking advantage of the, the many opportunities that uh, nurse practitioners can offer Albertans in terms of receiving high quality primary care. All right, we're now going to go back to the floor for a question. Reminder to those joining by Zoom to please use the raise hand function. Thanks. Since we have you here. <laughs> um, there's speculation that uh, maybe the Premier won't have an election next spring. I mean, she's never said anything like that. She's never hinted at it, but we don't have a by-election in Calgary Elbow because it's not convenient. So is that a concern for you? And what would the ramifications be if, if she decided to hold off dropping the writ? Uh, well, uh, we will be uh, doing more on that issue. Uh, let me just say um, uh, that obviously it would be a concern. Uh, the Premier does not have a mandate to go past um, uh, May of 2023. Um, she was not uh, selected to be the leader of the UCP on the basis of that mandate. And, and in fact, many of her wild ideas uh, have not uh, been tested by uh, Alberta voters in any way, shape, or form. And so she doesn't have that mandate. And so, uh, and, and in fact, the, the rumors around it uh, are concerning. So uh, we will be calling, or we are uh, going to be calling on uh, the Premier to very clearly state that she will, under no circumstances, try to weasel out of uh, a May 29th election day. Um, that is a guarantee that Albertans 
deserve to have. Uh, people are very concerned about the possibility of that guarantee disappearing, and that level of instability will further undermine um, our investment climate and our economic growth prospects if we are dealing with a premier who is um, uh, disrespecting democracy to that level uh, without a mandate. Uh, you'll see, I think, a tremendous um, uh, slowing of economic growth and investment during the term of that. So the best thing she can do is come out publicly and declare without qualification that she will follow the law that is currently in place. Fourth and last question then. And I had a chance to ask you about uh, the province inserting itself into Calgary Arena Entertainment Centre talks. What's going on here? Um, and would you support, uh, I mean, there's presumably the doors open now to some kind of provincial funding for this thing. Would the NDP support that? Well, listen, uh, the NDP has always, has, has already demonstrated uh, a high level of support uh, for uh, the City of Calgary and, and in particular any strategy that will be successful at, at growing their downtown. So for instance, uh, we've all, when we were in government uh, near the end of our term, uh, we invested uh, in a, an extension of the CRL uh, in, uh, um, in concert with uh, the Stampeders and the City of Calgary. Uh, to develop a convention center adjacent to um, where the arena currently is. So we have a strong history of that. Um, all we, obviously, uh, you know, we're always open to considering proposals, but I will say this, I think that um, uh, when you've got a deal that was as close to signed off as the deal that already existed uh, was, that when the Premier then steps in and wanders around aimlessly throwing out uh, possible other pots, uh, she's doing more damage uh, than good when it comes to getting a deal uh, solidified. And, um, and, uh, and I think that it is purely for political reasons and she's trying to undo the repeated insults that she has levied against Calgarians since being elected and continues to levy by uh, intentionally diluting their, their democratic rights. I think that they are very awkwardly trying to buy uh, hearts and minds, but uh, interestingly, I think it's very possible that she'll do more damage uh, to the agreement than good. Um, and uh, in either way, uh, I think it's, um, yeah, that's what I think. But ultimately, uh, we all want to see Calgary do well, and, and uh, it's the kind of thing where um, uh, the province should be waiting to look at proposals, not wandering into a deal that's 98% done. We have time for one final question. Sorry, another off-topic question. Um, we're seeing reports that uh, Premier Smith is going to whip her cabinet into voting mm -hmm. for the Alberta Sovereignty Act. I'm wondering what your take on that approach is. Uh, well, I will say, when I saw the largest cabinet ever uh, introduced uh, of any cabinet in Alberta's history from someone who claims to be concerned about cost. Uh, I wondered why she went for such a bloated cabinet, but now I guess we have our answer. Uh, so she's basically managed to secure 37 votes. So I'm curious as to who the next uh, eight cabinet members will be between now and the next vote. Um, but uh, honestly, it, it's, uh, so it sounds like a loophole to me, um, and, uh, and, and um, uh, it sounds like she has uh, reversed the commitments that she has made uh, to um, members of her caucus uh, when she was running for leadership, and uh, I honestly can't keep track of all the hairpin turns this Premier makes on her policy from day to day. Um, so uh, we'll see uh, whether folks respect it or not. But uh, I have to say, at the end of the day, uh, we have members who currently sit in cabinet who said things like the Sovereignty Act would be catastrophic to the future of our economy. And for those folks to truly believe that and then to sell out solely for the sake of holding on to a cabinet position for another six to 18 months uh, says to me that their priority is not the jobs, the economic security, of regular Albertans. It seems to be entirely about their own job and economic security. All right, that's all folks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching and to learn more, check out albertasfuture.ca.